I really, really appreciate the Viva Colors for sponsoring this um, and for sending me some of their paints to use for this session. So I'm going to be using their spring set, which um, sold out really quick. So I'm really, 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 really hoping that they bring it back. I know that they have a set of um, the color sheets that has the spring colors. Um, last time I saw they were still available. Um, but you can still always get the regular color sheets as well as their, some things on the floor. Um, and now I can't think straight. <laughs> I'm also going to be using the regular 16 color palette. I love how they're cork and they come with these. They're made by um, the local artisans um, in uh, Nashik, um, India. And it's 80% of their workforce, if you read their website, is local women. So they get like fulfilled and meaningful um, employment and they're bringing art to the community. It's really, really cool. Um... <laughs> yeah, I, I am so sorry. Like I was like, had all the audio going and everything. I don't know why the, um, the laptop decided to have its mic go. Like I didn't have it like set up in in the studio for it to be working but <laughs> my apologies for that so yeah just like throw a rock at my head if like something goes wrong again um okay uh so i i'm really 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 super sorry about the audio issue anyway um so that means i probably will be going over time because i just totally wasted like 11 minutes for that um Okay, so let's get this party started. Thank you for sponsoring us, Viviva. Um, as everybody hopefully got um, to look at the muse ahead of time, um, we are going to be looking at J Can Happen. Sorry, there's like a purple hair on there. Um, so this is once again a little bit more of a difficult pose because his head is tilted back. For some reason, I'm just always choosing um, these weird poses, unique faces. Um, I don't know. I think it's, it's good to really get out of your comfort zone. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's healthy. It's, it's healthy to grow. Um, oh yeah. And I guess my, if I, my shout out to my fourth graders probably just went totally buzz. So shout out to my fourth graders and shout out to my elementary schoolers and to, to everybody that I'm currently working with. Um, so yeah, because a few of you probably might be tuning in today. So, okay. Don't forget in the chat, interact. Um, if you want down below in the description, we did post a few important links for you. Um, obviously you can still join the 30 days, 30 faces watercolor challenge. Um, you can actually join any of the challenges that we've done previously. Like I did the pencil challenge and it's, I don't know how many months later and I still haven't finished. So you just, you go at your own pace. Usually it takes me a few months to get through. So please do, do not feel obligated to finish all 30 faces in 30 days. Just, you know, watch the videos, take your time. Um, as long as you can take like one little nugget of information and something that you learned, then I think it's a complete success. Um, also down below there, um, is a link to the posts. Um, for today's live, if you would please, please, if you were painting live with us, post some of your progress pictures. Okay, for some reason, Alexa thought I was talking to it. Um, post some of your progress pictures and we can sort of talk chit chat as a community, um, help give critique, help each other grow. Um, you know, just whenever you are on sketchy art school, like always participate in that community. It's, it's really helpful for your personal growth and for the growth of other artists because we need each other. <laughs> um, and then Viviva did give us a link, um, to purchase any of their paints. It is a, um, 20% discount, or you can use the discount code. I believe it is sketchy 20. Um, let me just quickly check that show more. Yeah, 20% off of Eve Color, Sketchy 20, um, reference photo, and then where to share your art. Okay, so I got that taken care of. Uh, so let's get this party started. Um, first off, 
I did a lot of my pre-sketching in um, Procreate ahead of time because it's really fun to have that undo button. Um, I always do some sort of pre-sketching either in a notebook, uh, one of my sketchbooks, sketchbooks or in Procreate just because I don't like doing a lot of erasing on my watercolor paper because I don't want to mess up the sizing or anything like that. Um, I want to try to keep that like as clean as possible. So I did one sketch in Procreate. I also did, hey you, get back in there. Um, and I also did one sketch here when I was playing with the paper. Um, as many sketches as you can do before you go to your final product. Like that's always a good idea because you'll be more familiar with the shapes. Um, so yeah, I'm going to transfer my sketch. I guess I will put this down here with my doggy. I have my studio mutt on the floor next to me. So if you hear any sort of like funny noises, it's, it's either her or my children. All right, so the way that I'm gonna transfer my sketch is I'm gonna use some graphite paper. Another way to do this is to just take your sketch, um, rub some pencil on the back of it, and then um, transfer it with like a colored pencil onto your paper. So we're going to tip these little bits right here. Thank you, sir. I always do two pieces of tape because sometimes one piece of tape will move and I don't like that because then my image gets a little funky. So how funky is your chicken? We should have like an official count of how many times I start singing or get the hiccups during my live feeds because I seem to do that a lot. I do that a lot. All right, so just checking the chat, making sure that there's no more issues. Yeah, so Viviva, totally cool. Thank you for sponsoring us today and for giving our community a nice discount. Um, also, when you finish your work, please, please, please give like a shout out on whatever social media you use, um, like Instagram. Uh, occasionally, I'm on Twitter. Uh, if you tag me in your posts, I will either add it to my feed like somewhere and give you like a shout out either like in my stories or repost your post. I'm really bad at figuring out how to repost posts. Excuse me, plate, you need to move. So when I do a transfer, like I'm not going to transfer every single little doodle line because obviously I have like a lot of lines here that I was using in attempt to find like the shapes that I wanted and that's just how I do. So I do have the reference posted above my head so you can see that. And when I do my sketches, I'm always looking for the key defining shapes and just the basic proportions. Um, I always try to like measure things off. Like the negative space in this is absolutely wonderful for helping with this odd pose. Um, Cause you have to remember that, oh, why are you doing that? <laughs> um, because his head is back further that means that the ears are going to be lowered and so like this shape here is really cool and important and like noticing the shape like this, this guy really has like great shapes on his head um stop you know what's really bad having dry skin and trying to work like a touch screen device is just, it's never good. Um, like it just doesn't work for me. <laughs> it's like, no, there's not a finger there. I'm not gonna respond. So it's always a good idea to like allow the um, 
the negative space to, to guide you and the, the larger shapes, as well as the shapes that the shadows make. Um, I'm all about shapes. If you've ever seen any of my classes or my live feeds before, it's shapes, 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 shapes. The most important things to me. Vamos! Into the recycling bin you go. Can anybody know that like Earth Day is this month? I'm like the 22nd, which is kind of cool. Oh no, I forgot to have an eraser ready. I had everything set out last night, but I forgot to put out an eraser. I found my eraser. So I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser because it's way more gentle than most other erasers and I'm going to lift up some of this extra graphite and just sort of dab and tap on top of my sketch and shake the webcam and the whole entire desk. Good job, Lauren. Get everybody motion sickness. Including my little friend. This is my little traveling gnome that my husband gave me years ago, and I still have it. It travels with me on all my little art escapades, and it lived at work for a little bit too. There's like green clay stuck in its eyes from when we were doing stop action animation. Like, 10 years ago. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet 10 bucks it was Cory. I got stuff stuck on there. This poor kid. He like graduated like years ago and I'm still like, it was Cory. <laughs> he was a good egg. Really good egg. He actually helped me with some of my stuff in grad school. Whenever I had to do a project or something, he'd volunteer and be like, I'll help out. I was like, yes. Okay, so I have some of, like, you can barely see it, um, but that's okay, because I can see it, because I have glasses on today. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just go over the lines that I put. I'm using my Cole Anor Magic Pencil because it, it's fun. It has the three different color LEDs in it. Um, which, you know, adds to my caffeinated chaos. It's not very erasable. Because, you know, it's a colored pencil. It's like probably one of their polychromos lead-based ones. Um, but that's okay. I was teaching my second and third graders how to properly hold a pencil. Um, because when you're writing, you hold it like this. But when you are drawing, you want to hold it closer to the middle or even hold it by its bottom. Um, I prefer using an overhand grip. So then I'm drawing with my elbow and my shoulder. So I'm using more of my gross motor skills rather than my fine motor skills. I will move, you know, to this grip when I do more finer details. But for the most part, I want to preserve this muscle group um, and not overuse it because I have overused it. And now, you know, carpal tunnel, getting ready for some arthritis. Check out those like crazy bully knuckles I got going. I got my nails did for today. Cause my hands are always a mess. so good at not having nice looking fingernails and I can't do them myself every single time I do like everything always just like chips and peels off because I'm like washing my hands so much I've even tried like hi you want to go outside too you're not allowed back in if I let you out over the computer. Go. Okay. I lost my buddy. Um, 
Someone in the chat, what the heck was I talking about? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, silly dog. All right. So yeah, all right, um, eyeballs, they're about here. Nose itch. I think I made your eyebrows too low, sir. My apologies. He has fantastic eyebrows. Jay, like, what are you doing with your life? They're amazing. You got good shapes, man. <laughs> Absolutely nobody. Jay, you got great eyebrows. Okay, let me just check up on the chat and see what's going on. Hopefully the sound is good. Okay, just yeah, we're good with the sound. No one's complaining except for like me making people motion sickness from erasing and shaking the camera. All right, so I here, there's like shape here. Really, I don't know why, but I always like like that cool shadow that some people have in their eye. Well, like I guess like their eyelid skin gets like a little bit poofy like right below where the orbital bone is and it creates like this neat shadow that I really like it's it's like a good um landmark <laughs> that's the word nose noses are also really fun areas to start a drawing I usually like to start with a nose I find that is also a really good landmark like some people start with like the circle and then like they do the line now I like start with the nose and sort of like blossom out from there um because I always find that I make the shape the oval the circle or whatever I'm supposed to start with like I make it wrong somehow like Lauren how can you mess up on like a circle I don't know but I do I'm talking to myself. I'm a really noisy teacher. I was sitting in the faculty lounge at the new school that I'm subbing at. And the entire time I'm there, just minding my own business, not even like you know, other teachers were there doing their lunch thing and like minding their own business. And I'm just like, dun, dun, na, na, na. or singing like pixies or something or making sound effects while I'm trying to solve like Sudoku or, or like the wordle problem of the day. Oh, I didn't do today's wordle problem. I'm excited. I have something to look forward to this afternoon or maybe tonight when I put my kids to sleep. That sounds horrible. Put my kids to sleep. When I tuck my children in, that sounds a lot better. Which is like the connotations of what, like, you know, putting someone to sleep means anymore. Chinny chin chin is right there. Got the shadow over here. Don't think I did most of this right, but that's okay. It's really hard to do quick sketches anyway. Cause we gotta get the paintings in. Na, 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 na. There's so much like attitude with this pose. I love it. So how is everybody doing today? How? How's the weather? Where are you all from? What time is it where you're at? It's a little gloomy right now, but it's supposed to be nicer later on. For me, at least. Okay, I think that's good enough. Um, 
I really raised the composition more than I needed to. I will just have to do something like interesting and drippy and fun here. And your ear is a little bit more like rounded pointy up here. I like your hair there too. Shoo, 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 shoo. There we go. I kind of like chopped off part of your head. Oh God, did I just snort? And this ear, where? You lower than what I mean here? Well, it is kind of like at an angle because he's. Ignore me. I'm talking to myself. Oh my gosh, San Diego is a heat wave. Uh, and you finish this muse on day nine. North Pole, Alaska, 8 30 a.m. Good morning to you, Ruth. That is cool. So you're getting way more sunlight now in Alaska. I imagine it's been a little too dark for a while. I love the spring equinox, vernal equinox, I think, yeah, because it just, it means the light is coming. The little green fluff balls are starting to grow on trees. The world is starting to wake up. The birds are getting noisy. The cars are painting. The cars are painting my tree green. The trees are painting my car green. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty content with my sketch. Quite content with it. Um, so now when it comes to these palettes, um, I'm shedding. They do give you like a little spot to mix colors, but um, that's more for like travel mixing because like that's a little spot if you ask me. So uh, I have a dinner plate set up next to me right here. Um, and I'm going to be like swishing around and mixing my colors on there because... I need lots of space and I like that it has a lip to sort of contain my disasterness. All right, so I am gonna focus a lot on the spring colors today. I really, really love the olive green that came with this. That one is here. Um, probably gonna use some of the bee yellow and I guess some, per I don't know why I'm feeling like very green. Um, and then I'll probably mix some of that out. Uh, the Alzerian crimson with the permanent green in order to get like, um, like a nice dark, like purplish, brownish, grayish, neutral. Um, and then if I do need to, this area, if I want to darken that up, I'm going to, um, yeah <laughs> vacant uh, then I'm gonna switch over to my Viviva color sheets and probably use some of the where is it some of the peacock blue um, or the um, what are you the Persian blue thing is with these they're ultra concentrated and if you get them on there too thick they'll have this weird sheen that will then get like reactivated so you have to be very mindful when using the color sheets especially with the blues and the violets that you definitely dilute it enough um, otherwise your finished product is gonna just be weird and the, clo the colors will not flow as nicely oh these are really cool look it folds out with a little palette there too I like it. All right. <laughs> Finally having the snow melting in Canada. That's nice. Ooh, Scotland. Sheila, four seasons per hour today. Snow, rain, sun, you name it. They got it in Scotland. <laughs> you poor thing. Um, or it could be fun. 
Whatever. It's tea time. Okay, just so I can see things a little bit better, I'm going to be propping my um, my watercolor board upwards just because like painting flat for me is just bad news because it, it warps my perspective. Like some, I know it's difficult to do that with watercolor because like it's also liquid, but I'll, I'll deal with it. I just won't like puddle it too much. I'm going to put on my copper gloves to help with hand cramping and prevent me from rubbing stuff all over the place. Monroe Bay, California. I really miss California. Well, Southern California. I haven't been to Northern. Banana split song. Da -na -na -na. And then someone was asking about the... Oh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, sister, uh, someone write the colon or pencil name if you know it. It is called the Magic Pencil. It's the original tricolored pencil. I buy them off of Amazon. I get them in like a 12 pack. It's much more lucrative to do that. But you can also purchase them. Um, oh my goodness, look how little is left of this one. But you can also buy them in the woodless format. So you can use like a clutch pencil holder like this, or they sell them in like jumbo pencil um, in packs. But I really like the Colinor pencils. They're like my BFFs. I have them all over the place. Um, I even have an entire set that I had to order from the Czech Republic. These ones are cool. The entire set of magic pencils and these ones are woodless. Bavaria, 6.30 p.m. Okay, better than a.m. I can open up a box. So I got these uh, for myself as a Christmas present. Um, and as you can see, they, they got all sorts of colors swirled in them. And I really like the smell of them. Hmm. I don't know. There's just something very comforting about the way they smell. My favorite one is this one. I have another set of them and my blue one is worn down to like a nub like that big. Uh oh. Hiccup count. Hey, I was looking for these. Hey Lauren, guess what? What? We're painting. <laughs> what do you mean you're connected now? Oh, you silly Bluetooth. <laughs> um, hey Ellen, you really don't have too much to catch up on other than the fact that I was talking my head off having some audio difficulties and such. All right, so I'm going to actually start putting some watercolor on here because it's like 12.38. All right, you talk too much. So I'm taking this Princeton Neptune size 4 quill brush. You can use like whatever large watercolor brush you have. Um, you know, remember when painting with paint brushes, you always want to choose a brush that matches the area, the size of the area that you're painting. So if you're painting a small area, you don't want to be using a giant brush. Like you're never going to be able to get what you want done unless you have like the most delicate precision of your hand and a nice point to it. Um, but yeah, so large areas, large brush, small areas, small brush. I like this brush. It's like so floopy. It doesn't have like good snap to it but it's great for like these large plops of water. I always get myself like poked on the little wires here. I still like it, I, I really do. Okay, so I got that base down. Um, I don't want puddles, I just want it to be glossy. So you can see here that it's just glossy. No puddles, no. 
All right, so let's go in and I'm gonna use my number eight. This one is a Red Sable Master Stroke by Blick. Love Blick. Um, and I'm going to be taking some of this amazing olive. It's not a lovely color. Like, look at that. I really like it. And I am just going to float some of this. Like, I always take it also up right into the hairline just to have like continuity of like scalp. <laughs> so, Jay, I'm painting your face green, olive green. I hope you don't mind. Just getting in some of those first layers of shadows on your face. I can always remember when you're doing one of these live events and you're painting along, like it's, it's really difficult um, because like it's such a, a quick amount of time. Um, I usually have like no idea what the final, like I only have a, it's wrong to say I have no idea. I have some idea of where I want the painting to go, um, but I do make some of the decisions like on the fly, which is kind of like not fair to anybody who's like trying to paint along with me. You know what? Your shirt collar is a lot lower, sir. I'm sorry I messed that up. All right, now I'm gonna take some of the cobalt blue. This is like a lighter blue. I can't believe how pigmented these paints are for the price. It's like, what? small child in the hallway or is that the dog is she back yes yes you are Sorry about that, my dog, she was back at the door. It's funny, I switched my desks. Um, my chair is still spinning because my other desk was really squeaky and now my chair is insanely squeaky and I'm just like, I can't win. Squeaky desk, squeaky chair, squeaky life, squeaky personality. What else? All right, so I'm gonna let those, like see how nice they like play and flow together? I kind of also like how the, um, this olive green, like it really, once you get it on the paper, like the, the yellow of the green really likes to pop out. Um, so it's like a warmer green, which is I guess why I like it, I think it works really nice for like skin tones and whatnot. Now I am going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to blot out some of the areas where I want some highlight. Okay. Gonna just blot that. Blot. That's what's nice about water control. Dude, you're supposed to be like taped down and you're not. What good was it for stretching this paper if like, I am the worst at stretching my watercolor paper. I used to be really good at it, like pre-dampening it and getting it to like stick nicely to the board and be super taut like a drum, but look at this. It's like poofing. Now it's a nice unit. But whatever, I'm using um, Arches cotton paper, 300 GSM. No, it's not 300 GSM, it's it's bigger than that. It's um, 300 pound paper. So what is the equivalent of that in GSM? 640. 
GM. But what, where did I get an S from? Yeah, it's 340. 640, Lauren. <laughs> All right, so I got those highlight areas in there. And that's looking pretty. Okay, so now I wanted to... I need like a nice warmer color to play with. And I'm still debating if I want to do the Crimson Lake or the Alzarian Crimson. Um, the Opera could even be really fun. But I still want to do like, ah, oh, why did you have to make these colors so cool? All right, you know, we'll just do like a little test patch. So I'm going to put some of the in here, see what it looks like. Oh, that's pretty. And then let's do the lake. Put that there. And then see, that's really cool too, but I think it's, I think it's too, not what I want. So I'm going to go with this one, the Alzerian Crimson, which I think is in their original palette too. Are you? Except they don't have the finger -mo bobber for the original. Where did that put it? I don't know. Does it matter? No, not really. Oh, found it. Okay, yeah. Nope, nope. That's Amarath. Ooh, there's burnt umber in that one. I like that. The deep blue. Oh, God, the royal blue is amazing. Um, all right, so yeah, we're going to use some of this. My paper is still damp, so the paint is definitely still flowing. And I'm just going in and doing, like, the next layer of depth with the shadows. Only the shadow knows. I hate the sound of my dog, like, grooming herself. I hate the sound of any animal doing that. Just... Especially when cats, like, clean their toes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else like that? Or just, you know, an Arno thing? No? Oh, cool. Okay, so I'm going to take some of leash. How creamy that is. Like creamy, creamy, creamy paint. There are a few opaque colors in this set. The cocktail pink, the cinnamon, the periwinkle, and the turquoise. Um, they are opaque watercolor, so it's more like a um gouache sort of feeling. Gouache, gouache. Gouache. What a fun word to say. Yes, make me some purpley mess. Hit the plate so you can see what they're mixing. I want to add some of that down here. I'm trying to keep it simple, but I'm not good at that. You love the sound. Your blackie was just cleaning his toes. Ugh. My cat, like, um, I don't, I don't remember which one. I think it was my brother's cat, Sarah. When she would clean her toes, she would like spread them out, like and go, and like literally growl, like make this weird noise as she was like grooming her toes. She would also growl while she was eating. She would just. Growl. She was like a really cranky cat. Look at that. I made his shirt collar bigger because I made it too small before. I'm going to take some more of the olive green. Boop. And I'm going to put that 
here. And I guess I want to put some more of that here. A little bit of it here. And then I really got to darken up under this eye here. Oh, that's the color I didn't want to use. Oh my gosh, he growls when he eats too. Aww. Animals are so funny. It's like, mmm, this food is really good. <laughs> I just snorted. Okay, your nose is pretty warm here. It's sort of light. So I'm going to put that there, push it, and then pull it back off with my brush. So it's fun to, like, mess around with your brush. Like, if you just have, like, a little bit of dampness to it, you can actually use it to, like, push and pull the paint puddles where you want them to go. Because um, remember, watercolor, the paint will only move where you give permission to it to move. And the way that you give it permission is with... Um, water and your brush so if you have like an area that's pretty wet then yeah the water paint will flow there but if it's dry and you're not like working with sopping puddliness then for the most part like it should behave and not go where you want it my watch is telling me I'm lazy and that I need to stand up and move not happening I'm painting right now Can't you see? Can't you see? I'm painting. Just bear with me. Okay, that is like a really harsh line there. Let's see what's. It's not even a line, it's just like a shape. Shape, shape, shape. And now I'm going to work on some of the shadows on his forehead. But like are a little bit bigger and add some of this whatever color mixture of cobalt blue, azurian crimson, and olive green. Um, and I'm going to add that to the shadow area in his hair. Dear Lauren, we need a bigger brush. like the sound effects. He, <laughs> I really like how that's coming out. All right, now I want to add the um, corner of the mouth dimples. My husband has a really cute little like corner of the mouth shape dimples. I always just want to like poke them there. But I won't because it's like rude. Hey honey, I love you. Gonna poke ya. Last week I was talking to one of the teachers in the building that I'm at. I was like, oh my gosh, you have the cutest nose. The end of your nose is so cute. And she was sort of like taken back like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, art teacher. Weird breed they are. Going around and saying they like people's noses. But you know, it's all good. I guess I don't know how you would respond to that, like someone saying that, like, ooh, I smell toast. Um, someone saying that you have, like, a really cute end of your nose, like, thanks, I grew it myself. <laughs> I 
I'm just sitting here like laughing at my own jokes to myself. So yeah, I'm I'm using um, the Viviva spring set. I really am enjoying it. The colors are playing. And they're flowing really well together. Um, I still really do like it in conjunction with the regular 16 pan set. Um, I think I want to bring in some of this deep blue just because I need just to enhance some of my values, make it a little bit darker. Let me rotate the plate so you can see how beauteous this blue is. I mean, I could use, I mean, they, you know, some of the Viridian, but whatever, let's just look at this. Isn't that gorge? So pretty. Because that's creepy voice. to the mic yeah that's what I wanted something like that to sort of get this part going all right we're gonna have some fun with this shirt area while the top of this sort of settles in so I'm actually going to tip up my uh, watercolor board and I'm gonna soak this area where I want his shirt to be but Lauren you said don't soak things you know in puddles that's okay I'm just gonna do it for this area here and I'm gonna take some of this majestic blue what a nice clean line for the shoulders of the shirt we're going to be very mindful there. I just splashed some blue. Like my brush got stuck. So, well, let's make some mud. Really work up this shadow area. I would feel horrible if I lost the uh, little cheat sheet <laughs> where the colors are supposed to go because um, I mean I eventually like I do memorize where the colors are on my palette but that would really like you know stink flow my pretty flow and make some messes See, watch this at the end here. I didn't get wet, so it's like literally like beating up. As soon as I take just some water, and it'll start like flowing down even more there. Like that the pencil does not smear with the brush and the water. I made a swing happy on the end of using the finalized. Cool. I'm just like quickly muttering through comments so if you hear me like not sounding I don't know <laughs> just ignore me Water is starting to look like yuck. 
whenever your water starts to look like yuck, it's a really good idea to um, change it, get some fresh water because you can't be making amazing colors with yuck. Why do I keep on doing that? I don't need to be grabbing that color. I want to grab some of this one. Thank you very much. I guess if you're like trying to clean your brush with dirty water and bring it to like clean paint, you're gonna have a bad time. I just totally missed the paint cup. Totally just missed it. But that's okay, we're good. Drippity drip 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 on the desk. On the desk. Alright, now I'm going to put the U back down right on top of the palette. Get my little cheat guides here so I know where the paint is. You're the wrong one. And you're the right one. All right, so now I got like drippy cool effect going here. I'm gonna wanna take, see if your paint water gets this nasty, it's it's time to change. So, a little less nasty. And we're just gonna leave that behind us. Um, okay, so now what I wanna do is Take my number eight brush, clean, blot it, and I'm going to try to sop up some of the area shapes here where the highlights hit his shoulder. Gotta do this with a clean brush that is damp, but not like sopping and not like completely dry. I don't know. So it works sort of like a sponge and then because the paper is still pretty damp underneath, like it won't give me like hard lines. It'll give me nice subtle highlights. Why did my voice crack like that? Mm -hmm. I want some peanut butter. What time is it? Oh my gosh, I'm already gone over time. Um, is it okay with everybody if I just like keep on painting? Sketchy, is it cool with you if I like go over? <laughs> Since I sort of wasted a lot of time in the beginning. Because I still, I still want to get like some more details up in his face. I had grandiose plans. Just like every parent knows when they have plans, they will just not always work out. So you have to have like plan X, Y, and Z to go with the A, B, and C. So yeah, if you um if you have to leave the, the broadcast because you only allotted yourself the hour of time, you can always come back, catch the replay. Um, you know, pause, rewind, pick up wherever you need to be. That's a nice thing about like doing these online dealios because um, you do have the ability to... <laughs> Don't like the teacher's voice? mute <laughs> you know like talk too slow speed up the video playback don't got time pause hungry you need to go get a snack you know come back another day whatever it's like it's your life do what you want okay 
So I'm happy with that area there. Now it's time to move back onto the face. All right, thank you, Ryra Lyra and Suzanne. I will keep on going. Sketchy, it cool with you if I keep on going? I'm just gonna like take over your channel. Because I'm, I think every single live thing I do, I manage to like go over time. All right, so mouth. Let's define that. I'm gonna take this and pull out this wee little shadow that's like right here. I'm literally just painting with the mud that's in the middle of my palette. Um, that's the one way that you know that there are some quality pigments if like the one to three colors that you're using on your palette mix really, I think I four, um, make interesting mud um, that's not like gross and still like look really cool that shows some quality um because it means that there's like some decent pigment in there and that it still like granulates and, and does beautiful things and then his lip is sort of like highlighted there so i'm gonna grab some of this olive plus the crimson lake that's super warm red I know it looks a little funny if I just made that shadow there, but in order to define the highlight that's at the top of the lip here, I have to put the shadow that's behind it. Later on, I'm going to be in the shower and I'm going to be like, is that paint or bruise? And then bring this up. This shadow's pretty intense. And then put that over there. I have it right in there. It's, I feel like sometimes paintings go through like that weird um, Wait, hold on, I just got a message from you. Okay. I just got the go ahead, the green light, just to go over time. Um, yeah, I feel like sometimes paintings go through like really awkward phases of development, sort of like when you're a teenager. <laughs> so this is going through that awkward like 13 year old phase right now where it's just going to look awkward with the shadows here until I kind of get them high on them. I need a little bit bigger of a brush right now. Excuse me. I'm gonna switch over to my number eight. Just drag some of this where I need it to go. And also when you are using intensely pigmented colors, um, just remember a little goes a long way. So it's always good to have um, like a, a decent size palette to mix things on um, because sometimes when you take it right out of the pan and put it to your paper it's just it's too much it's too much pigment and you'll end up wasting some of your paint and it won't flow it will have like a, a wonky sort of feeling to it so if you're switching to different grades of paint um, just know professional paint professional pigments a little goes a long way really cool if we actually had like uh, one of the um, the Viva peeps in the chat with us while we're doing this so they could answer questions about the paint. Mental note, make that happen next time. Because you know, it would, it would just be really cool if like people have questions about production, the paint, the colors, when is this going to be restocked? You know, those sort of things. Get that really cool big goat there. Little bro hair. Okay, ear shadow. That's what I want to work on right here a little bit. 
I'm working on the helix and anti-helix of the ear. Gonna water that down and use some of this color here. Oops. Why did I do that? Whoa, that was really a lippy sticky color. Let's tone that a little on it. A little too bright. Neutralize it. Get some of that mud out of there. Get a little bit of the blue. Cool it off. It is too warm. There we go. It's always like this this push and pull with me of like losing it and then getting it back and then losing it again. Kind of like my mental health. <laughs> Ignore that joke, that was inappropriate. Okay, nostrils need to be nice and deep. I have this random purplish color on my blush. So we're gonna use that into the nostrils, into the corners of the mouth. Okay, let us get some of this color into the shadow, that little corner of the eyelid. That's usually pretty intense there. Vivi French. Um, yeah, I catch up later since you have to run. Have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, morning. Month. Head, I'm just like Warren. Don't stick your tongue out, you idiot. Put that back. Okay, so I have a line here that's a little bit too harsh. I didn't really want it to be like that. I wanted it to just be more like a shape. Why did I say it like that? So I just used some clean water and sort of place the brush like right above where the line was and then put the water there so that it could flow up and create the shape versus um, line. Gonna drop in some color here. This spot where the, the shadow under the floofy part of his hair is. Just using the tip of my number four brush. painting like a few little wisps. I don't want to get like over um, detailed just because I like whenever I try to like do to me individual strands of hair it just ends up looking like poo. So I just try to do like a few of the key shapes there. Few key shapes and details. Just enough to give um, my eye like an idea of what's going on versus like bombarding my brain with too much information. Information overload. So yeah, 
that that's how I do. Some artists are like spectacular with doing like strand by strand and getting it to look like so good. <laughs> I'm not one of them. Totally not one of them. That is not my strength. My strength is chaos and rainbows and bunnies. And unicorns. So I just made a line there. I'm going to take a clean brush with just water and pull that line and turn it into a shape. I'm taking a line and I'm pulling out that line um, and turning it into a shape. Are you dry enough for me to get more? You're still not dry enough for me to get more of a smaller shape there. You have to be like patient when you're starting to do some of the final details of your painting. Um, because if the water is, if the paper still has too much moisture in it, your details are just going to blur and fade away. You kind of don't want that. You know, you're going to work so hard to achieve that and try to like have minimal fun colors on your page. You really, you want to give it the proper drying time. So sometimes, you know, use like handy dandy hair dryer. Other times just, you know, be patient. Watch the paint dry. Work on a different part of your painting work on a second painting. Sometimes it's fun having like two things go at once. So that's how we go. All right, let's see this. Um, okay, so Rat Mammy says it's amazing to watch the portrait transform. Yeah, it is really cool watching it go from like baby stage to like toddler stage, then suddenly awkward teenager stage. And then like, oh, hey, we're starting to mature and you can start to see like the final, the final product come. Um, so Suzanne, you're saying that you're having trouble lifting, um, not as good paper. That definitely could be an issue um, with lifting the porosity, porosity of the paper, like um, how much it sucks in paint. And also lifting can be difficult if um, your paint is very staining. I find, <laughs> oh, there's another one. <laughs> If your paints, specifically the, the red um, family of paints, um, they can stain and be very difficult to lift. So um, you just like practice, get to know your paints. Um, make like, take like an old piece of watercolor paper and do like swatches of each color and sort of drag it out, see if it granulates. Um, if you drag it out with just some clean water then do like some experiments with lifting, how it reacts to that. You can make like mixing charts. Now see, here's an issue right here. This is actually still a little bit like shiny. There's literally a clump of undiluted paint there. And that's because I took it straight from the pan. And I noticed that it was kind of drying funny in comparison to the rest. So I have to sort of resaturate that area and relift it a little bit. I don't want it drying funny. Let me add some of the mud to this color here just so it looks more like a shadow. So like when when you get a good mud mixture, it sort of becomes like um like a neutral brown or gray that you can use to create the shades and shadows that you need in your painting because it is going to have the matching 
pigments. So you, you get, um, rather than like bringing in like a fresh black or something into your palette. So you'll have more unity. Um, so, oh yeah, if you're using Daniel Smith pigments, some of those are very staining. Specifically, what color are you having trouble lifting? I love Daniel Smith paints. They're, they're really lovely, especially if they're um, quinacridone magenta and they're thalo blue, the green shade. They're like my jam. But I really like um, the deep blue and the royal blue by Viva. Like if they sold them in tube form, oh, I'd be like, give me 10 of each, please. It'd also be really nice. I would like to see their take on um, Payne's Gray. Because thus far, my favorite Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray, what's that? Um, is Windsor and Newton. I've tried the Sunny Layer one. I haven't, don't think I've tried the um, Daniel Smith one yet. So I'll have to, I don't know, I think I'll get dot cards from the company so I can try them out. All right, so having difficulty, probably the um, Alzerian Crimson, that one might be difficult for you to lift because um, as it's in the red family. Um, and also could be your paper. Um, some of it just like automatically stains some of the paper. The sizing allows it to float a little bit more while it dries on the surface of the painting. Um, so that you do have time to blot. It's not like fully absorbed into the, um, the paper. It sort of just like stays there on the surface. This is like really rough surface here. I'm working with the um, cold press, but because it's the 300 GSM, it's, I keep on getting like my bristles stuck in it. Let me read comment. So you love the pains, Gray, Suzanne. Delirious back, strong burnt sienna. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, some colors, I do associate them with being, like, delicious, like, the sensation of, the visual sensation of seeing it, like, actually, like, satisfies, like, the palate, like, and my tummy feeling, like, oh, that was delicious, which is, like, weird. Um, don't eat paint. Especially if you do buy the professional um, pigments, because sometimes, like, the pigment itself is toxic even though it's like water-based you don't want it on your skin or in your body don't, don't do that don't don't taste the art supplies it's usually also like not the best idea that i have my dog in the art room with me um but i do keep her and um separated from all of my art supplies because otherwise that would be like really bad to expose her to any of those chemicals um specifically anything that has fumes. So that's why I don't use oil colors anymore or um, I also stopped working with resin because number one with oils, the oils themselves were like very innocuous, like as long as, you know, the pigment and it wasn't toxic, but it was the, um, the fumes from the paint thinners um, they were actually giving my husband headaches. So I was like, hmm, what do I love more, painting or my husband's health? So yeah, the um, the paints went bye-bye. Um, same thing with the resin, because that stuff off gases for like a good 24 to like 72 hours. Um, and you know, you don't want delicate little lungs of dogs, kitties, children. <laughs> small human beings to be exposed to that. So yeah, I also got rid of all that. I also found out that I'm allergic to epoxy resin. So yeah, that was fun. By fun, I mean not. All right, so I'm overworking this area. I need to back off. Um, Maybe it's time to consider if I want to do some sort of like background or something. I was thinking of, I really did want to use some of the permanent greens somewhere in this painting because it's like really a cute green. 
me show you that. Clean up some of my palette. Okay, so this is the permanent green from the spring palette. Look how nice that is. It's like so happy. I guess that's why it's on the spring palette. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to put some of this in our background. I'm not even like doing wet on wet pre-wetting it. I'm just having fun with it. And then this side I'm actually going to pre-wet because this is the side where it's sunny in the picture. So I want it to be a little bit more diffused. And then I'm going to bring, just tap in some of my mud there, grab a little bit of my, what color is this again? Deep blue. And just add some of that. And a little bit of the Alzerian Crimson. I feel like Alzerian Crimson comes like in every like base palette. Like it's just the cool red that comes with every starter palette. I just spilled water all over my pants. Oh my gosh, it's already like 125. Ooh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's not picking it up in the camera. But like that portion of my palette, the way that the blue was dripping in, it looks like a peacock feather. That was so stinking cool. Where am I gonna put my tea? I'll put it here. That was a lovely view of my elbow, wasn't it? Okay, Um, I need to get some of the face details in here. Um, but I have it so, so wet, and that makes me so, so sad. So I'm going to add a little bit more shadow to this area up here. So shadow going up here. Just putting some of the mud, a little bit more of the crimson, a little bit more of that blue, because I really want to... And I don't care if it's like dripping down onto the forehead, because then it matches the shadow that the hair makes on the forehead. See? See what I did there? You. Does anybody else talk to their paint? Or is it just like a me thing? I don't know how I got that happening, but I like it. All right, so I want to add some of you here, a little bit here. Why do I always do that weird Minions Grew accent? One of my students told me, you sound Danish when you talk like that. And I was like, what? Yeah, they speak like Danish and German in their house and apparently when I do my silly voices I make myself sound a little bit like a foreigner. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so always remember that the top lid goes over the bottom lid. Okay, thank you, Suzanne, for saying that you talk to yourself. I'm not the only one. So how many um, in who are watching? <laughs> Do we even have any people still watching it or just me and Suzanne? Um, are doing the challenge, like... See, does it tell me how many viewers we have? Eleven people like it. Oh, cool! We have like fifty-three people watching right now. <laughs> that's cool. Thank you for sticking around. That's that's really kind of you. Um, and I just lost the chat. Show chat. Um, 
don't know what I'm talking about. I completely just forgot what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. I was going to be asking um, how many viewers are doing the 30 days challenge. Um, and are you, like, caught up with the challenge? Or are you like me and, like, three months behind? Is your goal to finish the challenge all in one month, or are you um, are you just gonna take your time and go at whatever pacing, or you know maybe like skip some of the styles that are being taught, do your own thing, and just like appreciate the video um, and the different way that the artist is doing it. Like, oh, it's always pretty cool to like learn some other people's techniques and styles, and then still go off and do your own thing. I mean, you're always going to have your own personal flair on things. And I don't know, I don't believe in doing classes where it should be cookie cutter art where everything looks all the same and it looks like 12 mini Picassos. Like, that's just weird to me when that happens. I don't think it's, I mean, it's good for learning a technique, but I don't think it's good for developing your own style. Um... <laughs> So, okay, so Suzanne is saying that she's new here, want to figure out how to get it. Um, you can just follow the link. Briar uh, Lyris is way behind. Um, oh, Barbara, wonderful. Thank you to read that you gave yourself the whole year. Cheryl, way behind, and we'll do it over time. Very good. So... Yeah, like really, it's it's a lot of going at your own pace. It's just, I think Sketchy wants to make available like 30 lessons, like give you that content. And I mean, you have like lifetime access to it. So there's really should be no rush. All right, now I'm getting the mouth how I like it. Get that like sort of snarky look going. Maybe I'll leave this eye sort of ambiguous. That leaf blower literally sounds like it's in my living room. What are my neighbors doing? <laughs> Oops, did not mean to get that much water there. Oh, well, gotta work with it now. get this shadow that's under there but it needs to be warm Tamara I'm glad to hear that you like to enjoy it and take your time like it's art it really shouldn't be stressing you out unless like you're on some sort of deadline for like taking a class like that you're paying for and that has like a deadline for credits or something you really should be able to just or if you have like a gallery showing and it's like, oh, gotta hang. Um, I'm really happy that you can't hear the leaf blower because it is loud. Like, <laughs> I love how sketchy, like, they always take my silly faces and hiccups and always use them in like the promo for my lessons. <laughs> what are my bangs doing? They're like being weird right now. I'm really like happy with how this is going. Um, all right, I do want to add some of the opaque colors in there, so I need to. I had no intentions of doing this, but be right back. I'm gonna grab my um, blow dryer, my hair dryer. I'm gonna dry a spot. I feel like if you can't see my foot in the camera. Good, you can't see me doing that. So, I'm just getting out my hair dryer so I can use some of the opaque bits. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, thank God. That was a water bottle with a lid on that I just kicked. lost some of my nice lighting. Which way is on? Hopefully. Oh, come on. These bulbs are legit monsters. Look at that thing. difficulties. Don't worry, I shall keep talking and keep you entertained while I am fitting the light bulb. Let us hope this one is not dead. Oh, this one is dead! Look at that! Too bad dead bulbs. Or is it the lamp? Whoa! No! This little using cap on there. Now that I'm blind. <sighs> All right. So yeah, totally blind. Um, here's my number four brush. Once again, my water is looking craptastic. I'm going to move that out of the way. Grab my Super Mario Brothers cup full of fresh clean water. Like literally, this is my fourth um, container of water. Oh no, your power just went out and <laughs> ah, ah, I hate that. Like when you use something that like, um, God forbid, like we, oh, hey hair, um, like use the blow dryer and like a heater fan is on somewhere in the house, <sniffs> lose power. Well, back to grooming yourself, I see. All right, so I'm using some of the periwinkle just to probably actually should have used some of the cinnamon. Just like odd color to be called cinnamon. I would always thought it would be more like um, like brown, like the spice. But I'm going to use this to highlight. And I'm going to mix the cinnamon and the periwinkle together. Because I can. So now I have like a really cool sort of pinky color. It's kind of not really like a pinky gray. Not really showing up. And I want to get a little bit of this nasal highlight. So this is like really nice, opaque, and creamy. Just not expecting that. Usually, um, watercolor pan sets like occasionally you get the will you stop that um you'll get just like all the translucent ones and then like occasionally um like a white um but yeah no this one it came with like four translucent colors which is like cool so then I don't have to why am I blotting my brush on my shirt so I don't have to uh, go like grab like the gel pens? It's just like one less thing that if I am painting like with the travel palette, like take my stuff to work with me or something. It's just like one less thing I have to bring because hey, it's right here. So thank you, Viviva. That was very kind of you to, to take that in consideration for my life. So I'm just using this um, to 
carefully just show off some of the highlights. I'm going to use some of the Periwinkle slash Cinnamon mixture that I created on my palette. And I'm going to do some of the little floofs, like the flyaway floofs that are on the edge. And I mean, like, unlike using like a gel pen or something to get um, some little lines, like you actually can have like a tapered line, like with the, you know, touching it a little and then adding a little bit more pressure versus just like a line that's not tapered. Surprise myself with that one. I'll just have to add that to my resume. Frightened by her own hiccups. And I can always get carried away with, with doing highlights, which is like really sad. And then it's like overdone. And then I don't know, it leave, I think if you have too many highlights in your painting, sometimes it can detract from the depth of some of the colors. So I try not to use opaque paints to like fix mistakes or anything. Um, usually I really just want them for adding just little bitty highlights where maybe I lost some of the white of the paper. I mean, you'll never ever get anything to give you that crisp white of the paper back once you lose it. So that's why some artists will use um, masking fluid I don't know why that's a question. Because, you know, that'll give you that insane crisp white of the paper. Let me just make your nostril a little bit darker in there. And I don't think we're done. What? We're done? Now we're done. Maybe a little bit of whoosh, whoosh, whoosh for some facial scruff. Just a little. Oh, that was too much. Because Jay does have a little facial scruff. And thank you for everyone who is. Um, attentive in the chat and answering any of the questions about the sketchy community, about supplies, um, sharing tips, like that's, that's really cool. And that's what artists always need. Um, I feel artists are really good at sharing, like, well, at least like all the artists I associate with, like not gatekeeping. So you know, we probably should like start that up as a discussion again. Um, in the sketchy art school and like the general community discussion board like about like different tips that you want to share different chips tips that you've learned from other artists um because it's really nice to grow as a community i dig it hey lauren didn't you say you were done yeah i did why are you still painting I can never put my brush down. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to call this one finished for now. Um, I really, really enjoyed um, this live session. I apologize about the beginning um, and like the audio issues. Like it was really weird because when I initially set up everything and did like a test run, like that didn't happen. Um, is there paint on my face? So, yeah, I apologize about that. But as stated, um, there's a link below for the the live um, uh, the live post in the community. So if you want to actually post your work, start a discussion about the techniques that you use, what color palette you use, what worked, what didn't work, what part you like best, what part you're like, whoa. Um, you know, and if you have any critique for me, like, hey... Lauren, don't do that next time. That's annoying. Um, you know, I'll, I'll take it into consideration. <laughs> uh, 
So, uh, yeah. Um, also, remember that we do have that discount code. If you use the direct link below, it will take you and the link should be automatically the link. If you hit the link, the code should automatically be um, deposited for you on the Viviva Colors website to get that 20% discount. Um, or you can just use the Sketchy 20 code at checkout and you can get yourself a set of these travel paints. Um, and you know, they got my two thumbs up because I really enjoy them and I think that they're a really fun set. Um, anything else that I'm forgetting to say? Um, yeah, please remember, uh, join into the challenge if you can for the 30 faces, 30 days. Uh, you can go at your own pace. Check out like the, um, the sketchy page and there, there are like a ton of different challenges that you can take. Like you don't, you don't have to do the watercolor, even though like, um, like that's the one that's currently going. Like we have graphite challenges. There are like 30 days, 30 faces with uh, like procreate. And I mean, like if you're more of a beginner, there are some beginner classes that aren't like one of these breakneck speed um, challenges. There, There's like um, with Michael Creighton, like some basic uh, graphite and just like using the Loomis approach to drawing. Um, if you want to learn cross hatching, pen and ink, there's always Dylan, Sarah and um, wagonized uh franz von stone so i mean there there are a ton of them out there and then there's there's also Pis pixel princess um she has a lot of things there too so um yeah it's it's you know go at your own pace just do what you need to do um in order to get you know through the the course um uh... yeah i don't think i have to much else to say except um thank you for joining in thank you for all of you that stayed with us um stayed with me even though i went over time by a lot <laughs> appreciate it um have a wonderful wonderful day so yeah um i don't think i have anything else to say <laughs> So, all right, thank you for joining.